Okay. Okay. You want to go to job? You want to go to job three sixteen? You want to go to job three sixteen or Romans four and five? Not five to eight. Not verse one. Okay. I'll go to verse five. We'll read that. You tell me what it says. All right. Don't leave. Don't leave. Oh, now you got. But it says don't work. You're not gonna be saved if you work. That's what you said. Bro, why are you leaving? You see, they mention something and they leave. Hey, 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 hey! Him that rebuking the gate. I see the looks on their face. eternal life. How can I be saved? One came to Christ. Let's see what Christ said. And he said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, that is God. But if thou wilt enter into life, if you want to be saved and enter into the kingdom of heaven, read, keep the commandments. Keep the commandments. Do you believe in Christ? Do you believe in Christ? Do you believe in Christ? So you got to believe what he said. Obviously, before he bro, before he got crucified, we're living under the Old Testament. After he got crucified, we well, you have to believe Testament. in Christ. Yeah, obviously, bro. And he said, keep the commandments. You just said we weren't talking about Christ when we were in the Old Testament. Now we're saying what Christ just said, and now you don't believe in Christ. If you don't believe in Christ, you're not making the kingdom. And Christ said, go and keep the commandments. You have to keep the commandments. Hold me when I said I don't believe in Christ. Hold me. Because, read that again. Do you believe what Christ just said here? And he said unto him, Why callest thou no, me? No, what did Christ say? But, if thou wilt enter into life, keep the commandments. So do you believe Christ? When he said you gotta keep the commandments yeah. to be saved? Yeah. So what's the problem? But you gotta keep the commandments. Old Testament, New Testament, right? Old Testament. We're in Christ. We're believing what Christ said. Do you understand what the New Testament is? Under Christ. When did the New Testament start? The New Testament? Yes. Yeah. It started with Christ. I'm saying like, in order to be saved by just believing in Christ. I'm going to give you, give me, give me um, John 8. I'm going to show you something real quick. Read. John 8 and... Uh, John 3.16, bro. We'll get there. That's the next one. We'll get there. I like that scripture too. Bro. Oh, man. Uh, John 8. That's all you got to do to be saved. It's not by works, bro. Okay. You have to believe in Christ. John 3.16 is still technically is before Christ died. So that's the old covenant. To you, that's the old covenant, right? Because it's before Christ died. He's talking about after, though. Brahim, Brahim, Brahim. Isn't keeping the commandments so you can enter into life after? Bro, you try to keep all the commandments, bro. Listen, all right, right. You're switching the topics. You're switching the topics, Brahim. Why are you interrupting me? Because you're switching the topics. We have to have one train of thought, and you're jumping here and there. First, you said we were where were we at in the Old Testament? The hoary head, right? Leviticus 19, you're like, yeah, we're talking about Christ. But well, Christ is the word. All right, we went to the New Testament. Christ said, keep the commandments so you can enter into life, which is the future. But then you say, you know what? That was before he died. So that's the Old Testament. And now you give me John 3 16 to prove that he came for everybody, but that's still before he died. So is that the Old Testament or no? But no, you said, no, that's after. So what is it? You keep moving the goalposts. So let's go to where we're at, John 8. Uh, read verse 10. John chapter 8 and verse 10. When Jesus had lifted up himself and saw none but the woman, he said unto her, Woman, where are those thine accusers? Have no man condemned thee? Why? Because this sister was caught in the act of adultery. And they, according to the law of Moses, what are you supposed to do, Brahim, when you, you're, you commit adultery? Brahim. Hold up, hold up. I'm not even listening. Well, according to the Old Testament, if you commit adultery, you're supposed to be put to death. Let's see if Christ did that, because it was before he died, right? Read. She said, no man, Lord. And Jesus said unto her, neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. He had mercy on her. He said, go and don't do it again. Keep the commandments. Cause that's what grace is. You're supposed to leave, believe in Christ. He said, don't do it anymore. You gotta believe in Christ. If he said, keep my commandments, don't sin anymore. That's believing in Christ. How are you gonna show your faith in Christ if you don't do the things he tells you to do? All right, bro, Romans four five. Okay, <laughs> okay, okay. You wanna go to John, you wanna go to John 3, 16? You wanna go to John 3, 16 or Romans four and five? 
Fahim, you want to go to John 3, 6? Because you quoted John, what was 4, 5? Okay, what's your question? Let's go there. Okay, what's your question on it? What's your question on it? When I think about it, you want to start at verse 1 to get the context? Okay, I'm going to ask you, I mean, let's, bro, because you keep jumping. You say, oh, that's the Old Testament. Oh, that was before he died. Oh, John 3, 16, now you're on a little room. So how, how am I going to get into a context with you if you're jumping all over the place? Listen, Brahim, I was trying to get into it, and you didn't accept Leviticus 19, so we could go back to Revelation 1, and then you jump again to something else. What do you think about Romans 4, 5 to 8? Not 5 to 8, not verse 1. Okay, then I'll go to verse 5. We'll read that. You tell me what it says. All right, you said verse 5 first. Oh, King James, right. read verse 4, uh, verse 5. Romans chapter 4 and verse 5. But to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. Okay, what does that mean? So you tell me you brought it up. But to him that worketh not means if you doing no works, but you believe in What him. works? Worketh not, just works. Don't work. That so don't have law. a nine to five? What are you talking about? The law, bro. Obviously, I'm right yeah. not. What, what, law? what law? What law? Obviously, the laws of the Old Testament is following Testament? God's commandment. Just following the commandments. That's what I'm talking about. Okay, but, but, all right, but, but now, I'm trying, okay. him that does, so, believe it on him that justified and godly, his faith will be counted okay. for righteousness. Okay. His faith alone. Not don't leave, broke. don't leave. I got work, I got work. Oh, now you got, but it says don't work. You're not going to be saved if you work. That's what you said. Yeah. Bro, why are you leaving? You see, bro, they mention something and they leave. Because what? They do not believe the yes, Bible. Right. Christ right. Said, keep my commandments and live. Bring it out. Enter into life. Right. That's Bring what the out. Bible says. Give me Daniel 9 verse 11. Bring it out. Who is he going to justify? Who is the ungodly that was breaking the commandments before that has to be justified because they were doing evil? Bring it out. Me. Daniel chapter 9 and verse 11. Yay! All Israel have transgressed thy law. All Israel is ungodly. All 12 tribes, the northern and the southern kingdom. Right. That's who he came to justify. Give me Isaiah 45, verse 25. Bring it out. Who is the ungodly he came to justify that if they believe Christ and what he said to keep the commandments, they will be justified because only Christ could do that. In his blood can we be justified. Now with sacrifices. And now with works. Now it's, that's the works. The works is the sacrifice. Read. Isaiah chapter 45 and verse 25. Mm -hmm. In the Lord shall all the seed of Israel be justified. In the Lord Christ Jesus shall all Israel be justified. That's all right. Israel, not all the world. Right. Not the, the white man, right. not the Arab, right. not the Edomites, or right. the Ishmaelites, or the Midianites, or the Moabites, but all Israel. Because right. all Israel has sinned. It wasn't just the northern kingdom. Right. It wasn't just the southern. But all Israel has sinned. Give me Colossians out. about the handwriting of ordinances that he has taken away that were against us. I think verse 14. Bring These guys want to come up here, make a statement, and leave. Right. Jump all over the place. They don't want to make videos saying that we're hopping all over the place. Read. Colossians chapter 2 and verse 14. Bring it out. Blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us. So Christ came and blotted out the handwriting of ordinances that were against us. What ordinances were against us? The sacrifices. The Bring animal out. sacrifices. Yes, you finish that verse? Sorry. Read. Which was contrary to us. And took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. He it nailed out. it to his cross because he's the ultimate sacrifice. Give me that right. Hebrews 10. Right. Hebrews 10 and 1. He is the ultimate sacrifice. He took all the other sacrifices away. We don't have we don't need the altar anymore. We don't need the temple anymore. Right. We don't need the Levitical priesthood anymore. Because right. Christ is our priest. He is our sacrifice. And in his blood are we what? Justified. Right. Sanctified. Right. Cleansed. Read. Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 1. For the law having a shadow of good things to come. What law? Those that he nailed to the cross. Read. And not the very image of the things can never with those sacrifices. With those what? Those sacrifices. With those what? Those sacrifices. With those sacrifices. Can I do what? Which they offer year by year continually make the comers thereunto perfect. 
perfect. Those sacrifices could not make us perfect. So we believe in the sacrifice of Christ, his blood, and not the blood of the bulls and goats that were used in the old covenant to cleanse us and sanctify us. Right. That is what it means. Don't do the work. The work of what? Animal sacrifice. Bring it out. Because what? The Pharisees, the Sadducees, they were getting wealthy. They were getting money from being in that position. Getting all that food, all the wealth, and the fame. So guess what? They thought by doing those sacrifices and that work that they were going to get the kingdom. Right. But lo and behold, no. What comes to be the ultimate and perfect sacrifice? Because those animals could not be it for us. Give me Hebrews 9 verse 12. Bring it out. Or 9. Sorry, 9. Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 9, which was a figure for the time then present. What was the figure of the time yet present? Read verse uh, 1. Go back to 9 after that. Verse 1. Then verily, the first covenant had also ordinances of divine service and a worldly sanctuary. So the old covenant had ordinances of divine service in the worldly sanctuary. Priests had to cleanse their hands and feet here before offering sacrifices or entering the tent. Guess what? We don't have that worldly sanctuary anymore. Right. We don't have a worldly priesthood anymore. We don't have those ordinances anymore because he nailed it to the cross. Read verse 9. Verse 9, which was a figure for the time then present. It was a figure, the worldly sanctuary or anything, and everything that pertained to it was a figure for the time yet present. Read. Right. In which were offered both gifts and sacrifices that could not make him that did the service perfect. It couldn't make us perfect. It couldn't justify us. That worldly sanctuary and the works within that sanctuary could not justify us. Those ordinances could not justify us. Those right. offerings, those sacrifices, the priesthood of the Levites could not justify us. Incense was to burn continuously on the altar. God instructed the priests to replenish the incense every evening and morning. A curtain separated the holy place from the holy of holies. The menorah, the altar of incense, and the bread of the presence were all in the holy place, but outside this veil. We needed Christ to do that. But Bring it up. That's what it means when it says, not he that worketh, but he that believe in Christ that justifies the ungodly because we were ungodly in the old covenant. Right. We weren't keeping it. He, he, he said that we were all under sin. Northern and Southern Kingdom, all Israel were under sin. So we have to believe in Christ just like Abraham did. And guess what Abraham did? Give me Genesis 26 verse 5. What did Abraham do to show his faith to Christ? Read. Genesis chapter 26 and verse 5. Bring it out. Because that Abraham obeyed my voice and kept my charge, my commandments, my statutes and my laws. What did he keep? My, my charge, my commandments, my statutes, and my laws. He kept the laws. He didn't keep the ordinances because he didn't have the ordinances. He didn't have the priests. All he did was keep the laws, statutes, and commandments. He obeyed God. Right. That's what James tells us. Faith without works is dead. Right. Give me James 5, 17. How do you show your faith if you don't have any works behind that faith? Bring it out. Show me your faith without your works, and I'll show you my faith by my works. Read. Right. James chapter 2 and verse 18. 17. 17. Even so, faith, if it have not works, is dead, being alone. You see? Faith without works is dead, meaning it's not alive, it's not worth anything, it's vain. Read. Yea, a man may say, Thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show thee my faith by my works. So you have to show your faith by your works. Not the works of animal sacrifice, by works of what? Of keeping the law, statutes, and commandments. Because Christ still commanded us to keep the commandments right. to enter into life. Give me uh, Revelation 2, verse uh, 27, I think. 27 or 26. Uh, 20, start at 25. Revelation chapter 2 of verse 25. But that which he had already hold fast till I come. Uh -huh. And he that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end. Keepeth what? 
keeping my works until the end. What works? Keeping my works until the end. We have to keep his works until the end. Read. To him will I give power over the nations. Unto him shall enter into life. He that keepeth the works until the end. What works are those? Or keep read. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron. Uh -huh. As the vessels of a potter shall they be broken to shivers. Uh -huh. Even as I received of my father. So we have to keep the works of Christ until the end. And he told us to do what? Keep the commandments. We're not to do the old works. We got to get rid of that. Give me Hebrews 6 and 1. Bring it out. We got to get rid of that because all those things in the old covenant, those old works were what? were a shadow of things to come to bring us unto Christ. All those sacrifices we were doing were to show us and prepare us for Christ. That was That's what we're supposed to do today. We didn't have faith back then, and guess what? We don't have faith in Christ today either. Because back then we were breaking the laws, and today we keep breaking the laws, thinking well, all we gotta do is what? Believe in the sacrifice of Christ. Just like in the old covenant, all we were doing is sacrificing and thinking that's okay, that's fine, that's all I gotta do. Just sacrifice a bull and a goat, and I'm all right. I'm gonna make the kingdom. No, au contraire, mon frère, just like Bishop says. That's not the case. That is not going to happen. Read. Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 1. Bring it out. Therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ. The principles of the doctrines of Christ that we're supposed to leave us. What? Those old works of animal sacrifice. The priest would sprinkle the blood of the sacrifice on this mercy seat, symbolizing that the nation's sins were covered for another year. While only the high priest would see it, the mercy seat was the key symbol of atonement that God would forgive his people. Because that was only a shadow of things to come. That was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ. Read. Let us go on unto perfection. Let's go on unto perfection. Remember, we read in Hebrews 10 that those sacrifices cannot make us perfect. Right. So those principal things were what? Those sacrifices, those animal sacrifices. So leave that off and believe in Christ. Those sacrifices were meant to bring us unto Christ. Read. Not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works. You see, we can't lay that foundation anymore. We have to believe in Christ and his sacrifices and his word. If he told us we got to keep the commandments to enter into life, guess what? I'm going to believe in Christ. Right. 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 That's what he said and that's what I'm going to do. Read. And the faith toward God. And the faith toward God. So leave off from those animal sacrifices, the principal doctrine of Christ, and come into perfection and believing in Christ and Him and His ultimate sacrifice, that His blood is the one that covers us. Right. Because remember, he went, when Moses made the covenant and finalized the covenant with Israel, I think it's in uh, Exodus uh, 30, is it 34? In Exodus 34, what blood did he use to, to solidify the covenant? He used the blood of the animals that he had just sacrificed. Right. Start at five. Exodus chapter 24 and verse five. And he sent young men of the children of Israel, which offered burnt offerings and sacrificed peace offerings uh -huh. of oxen unto the Lord. Uh -huh. And Moses took half of the blood mm -hmm. and put it in basins mm -hmm. and half of the blood he sprinkled on the altar. Mm -hmm. And he took the book of the covenant and read in the audience of the people. Read. And they said, all that the Lord had said will we do uh -huh. and be obedient. Uh -huh. And Moses took the blood uh -huh. and sprinkled it on the people. So he sprinkled the blood of the animals on the people. Read. And said, behold, the blood of the covenant. The blood of the covenant, that's what it's talking about. That is the old covenant. The blood of the old covenant is what? Animal sacrifice. Yeah. But guess what? We're in the new covenant now. We're covered. We're supposed to be sprinkling ourselves with the blood of Christ, believing in Him, yeah. keeping the law, statutes, and commandments, believing right. He's the blood that covers us. Right. He's the blood that sprinkles us. Right. right? which the Lord hath made with you concerning all these words. Exactly, all these words. Let's go to Romans 4 and 5 again. Bring it out. This brother brought, uh, quoted Romans 4, 5 down to 8, and then he ran away. And then meanwhile, he was talking about, we're not going into the context. He's jumping from John three sixteen, 
Uh, he was avoiding, what was he avoiding? John 8, that was before, days before that. All that nonsense, they always accusing us of jumping all over the place, but they were, he was just doing the same thing. And not staying here, not contending for the faith like Jude 1 and 3 says. He wasn't contending, he just dropped the dime and left. Yep. Read. Romans chapter 4 and verse 5. But to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, mm -hmm. his faith is counted for righteousness. Your faith in Christ, you believe in that he's that sacrifice and that we don't have to sacrifice anymore, that he's our high priest, that there's no temple anymore, we don't need no altar, we don't need any of that anymore. All we got to do is keep the law, statutes, and commandments in the faith of Christ. Right. Sin no more like he said in John 8. Right. Because he came for the 12 tribes of Israel. Because they are all counted sinners in the old covenant. Right. That's what that's talking about. Go back to Colossians 2 verse uh, 14. 2 verse 14. Colossians chapter 2 and verse 14. Blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us. See, blotting out those works. Those handwriting of ordinances, remember the ordinances were in the worldly sanctuary. What we read in Hebrews 9 and 1, read. Which was contrary to us and took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. Nailing it to his cross. Give me Nehemiah chapter 10 verse 32. Nehemiah chapter 10 verse 32. Uh, yeah, next page. Nehemiah chapter 10 and verse 32. Also, we made ordinances for us. So the ordinances were what? For us to charge ourselves yearly with the third part of a shekel. So yearly, there was an ordinances to charge them for the third part of a shekel. Remember, didn't we read in Hebrews 10 that they continually sacrificed every year, yearly, and that couldn't make them perfect? And now we're reading that is an ordinance. Read. For the service of the house of our God. The ordinances were for what? The worldly sanctuary. Read. For the showbread and for the continual meat offering uh -huh. and for the continual burnt offering Read. of the Sabbaths, of the new moons, uh -huh. for the set feasts and for the holy things and for the sin offerings to make an atonement for Israel. And for all the work of the, and for all the what? And for all the work of the house of our God. That's the work we should not do. Bring it the out. The work of the house of God was for what? The meat offerings, the shoe bread, Bring it the, out. the continual birth. All of that was the work for the worldly sanctuary. Guess what? Christ took all that away and nailed it to the cross. Bring it out. Because he is the sacrifice now. He is the high priest. He is the one that makes atonement for us. Yeah. Because he went to the Holy of Holies once. And made atonement for all of us. But guess what? Under Aaron and his priesthood, he had to do it every year. Every year. But guess what? Christ only went in there once. He's our atonement. Right. He is the blood that covers us. Right. But guess what? We still got to keep the law, statutes, and commandments That's in the faith right. of Christ. That's, right. That's what that means in Romans 4 and 5. Because guess what? That's what our father Abraham did. Give me John chapter... My bad. It's not 7. It's uh, 8. 8 and 39, my bad, sir. John chapter 8 and verse 39. They answered and said unto him, Abraham is our father. Remember it says, we got to be like, we get, let's get Romans 4 and 5 and then we'll go back to this. Romans 4 and 5. Romans chapter 4 and verse 5. But to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly. His faith is counted for righteousness. See verse 3, my bad. Verse 3. For what saith the scripture? Abraham believed God, and it was counted unto him for righteousness. So Abraham believed God, and it was counted for righteousness. Now let's go to John 8, 8 39. John chapter 8 and verse 39. God bless you. God they bless answered you. and said unto him, Abraham is our father. Jesus saith unto them. So they, they were claiming, yo, Abraham's our dad. Yeah, they. Of course, they descend from the lineage of Israel. They are part of the 12 tribes of Israel. That's what they were claiming. Read. Jesus saith unto them, If ye were Abraham's children. If you were really descendant of Abraham, meaning not just physical, but spiritually, read. Ye would do the works of Abraham. 
you had to do the works that Abraham did in order to be considered a child of Abraham. And we read in Genesis 26 that Abraham kept the laws, statutes, and commandments. So if you want to be Abraham's seed and receive that promise that Abraham got, you have to be of his children. And his children do the works of Abraham, That's which right. are the same works that if you endure to the end that we read in Revelation 2, you're going to get the kingdom, eternal life, eternal glory. If you want to be a child of Abraham, which is a child of God as well, you have to do the works of Abraham, which are the laws, statutes, and commandments in the faith of Christ, because he also believed. And when he believed, he obeyed. Right. He showed his faith via his works. Nation is men leading by example. 